Okay, all right. One, two, one, two. Chris Courtney here. New Pragmatic Nation is so good to have you back um, after a, a slow Tuesday. Slow Tuesday, we're back with another edition of the Feedback Loop. And, uh, you know, it's always interesting. You have a slow day, and then you, the next day is, like, just piled up. Um, Tedgel's in here. Rebecca's in here. Uh, Katie's in here. Kara's in here. Um, super excited. Uh, I hope that there's also, like, even though we are a remote group, it seems like everybody's sick all at the same time. I was just getting over a little bit of a cold myself. So um, totally, totally hope that um, all of you are feeling better wherever you happen to be. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and just jump into it um, as I typically do when we are, when we're all loaded up. Um, so we've got, um, we've got Rebecca here. And Rebecca is jumping into a, another project. Um, so she, Rebecca's on the career path. And um, while, she, while she is feverishly looking for new opportunities, she's also very busy um, working, doing freelance projects. She's wrapping up uh, the CrossFit site that you might have seen on the show. She's also now beginning this um, project for somebody called The Knife Doctor. And uh, the knife doctor does exactly what you probably would expect the knife doctor would do. He, the person fixes knives. So, um, so Rebecca's basically going through the process. She's already she's already had her stakeholder interview, um, which means she's went and had said conversation with knife doctor. I'm guessing that n the knives were not out. Ah, I made it funny. Um, no, it wasn't really that great actually. Um, but she's she's clearly sitting here and she's moving into the into the wireframing phase and one of the things that's interesting for me and I'm going to hide my um, hide my tools here so we can just take a look at this um, so she's trying to figure out like how to how, how to elevate and move this forward um, if we go back to her stakeholder interview documentation I got to find it really really fast um, it's over here so we'll move that right there and we'll get back to you, Katie. Th this is like where the knife doctor is right now. The knife doctor is in a um, painful place. It's just not very good. Um, the knife doctor and then the knife doctor abbreviated. Um, so, so there's not a lot of content here. It's it's basically buy knives, need sharpening. Here's a picture of the dude. Um, so she's trying to she's trying to clearly move this forward. But there's not a lot of content to work with at the moment. Um, and one of the things that I often suggest doing before you get to this particular spot is I would advise looking at and considering what it have can I instead of trying to fill the space with words can I can I strip away all the visual accoutrements and the, the stress of the page itself and can I just focus on the content and this brings me back to you know I, I know that you haven't gone through um, Rebecca in Rebecca's case I know I know you haven't gone through um, the new pragmatic UX material but there were some changes that I made because I felt like creating the content is really, frank, in most cases, very, the most difficult part of the job. And one of the things that we did with New Pragmatic is we, we went through this, um, so there's this content for UX chapter in which I go into detail about br how to break down these pages and more importantly, how to break down priority like what is really important to the to the client in this case I, I, I took the Apple site and I said okay this really breaks down into mobile computers and everything else so you know when you take that concept and for the for the knife doctor you know I know that there's knife sharpening I know that there is uh, s scheduling the, the knife doctor I know that there's buying things from the knife doctor it's breaking down what that stack is and then coming in and layering information in. So, for instance, like this is Envision, and it's looking at okay, here's how they here's how they 
basically want to set up, but now we're going to layer in information for each particular step. And rather than trying to say, okay, some text will go here, let's start by figuring out what the text is and then let that drive the design instead of saying, I want three boxes here and now I've got to come up with content for all three boxes. I think it's a lot more stressful to try to come up with the content for the three boxes than it is to say, I need, I've got two topics here. And so I need two boxes to address the two topics that I've already found. It's, it's a flip on the dynamic, but I think that pulling the design out of it and focusing on the content first helps you, helps you push forward, um, frankly, just easier. And this, uh, this microcopy exercise, which we have, I think will will give you um, an easier pathway to figuring out, as you as you pointed out, you know what is the content. You've got a lot of lorem ipsum here, okay. You got knife sharpening, barber uh, barber tool sharpening. The, the question I have there is, should it just be sharpening, and then there's side by side knife sharpening barber sharpening or is there more here other sharp things i don't know what other sharp things uh, is he sharpening events uh, so is that like a, a calendar we, you know we we looked at some stuff for the for the crossfit um that for the crossfit of um uh project that you had that there were some calendar apps that weren't strict calendars like a you know they weren't like a monday through friday thing it was like here's something on the 14th the 18th the 27th and you were able to to highlight much like a concert calendar if you will um here's the store and and this is the that's the other thing right now i'm seeing everything presented you know services and explanation links learn to buy like knife sharpening barber sh barber sharpening other sharp things sharpening events, store, these things are all presented in the same way. Um, it feels like these should likely be different sections rather than like grouped together as if they're all the same style of information. The Insta feed, I'm guessing you're pulling in Instagram here, which is great. I, I know that, I know that, you know, you know how to do that. Um, blog and SEO. Um, my question here is, um, and I want to make sure that that your knife doctor pal friend has a blog. Um, you know, that's something that we got into last time where they weren't blogging, but yet they had WordPress. Um, call to action form, at least, you know, call it, that's pretty straightforward. Footer links. So so really for me, you know, this this kind of all sorts itself out. It's it's this middle section and this middle section, rather than presenting it as five things that are all of roughly equal value, I really think that this is where, this is really where I would, um, I would consider breaking it up into a couple of sections and then determining, okay, do it. How much content do I really need to, need to write here? Um, Facebook review slider. So I'm guessing you're going to go pull some Facebook information, um, look sharp. And, you know, like here, the question I've got is what's the visual? Um, is the visual like him in the background doing the work? Or are you going to like maybe video him sharpening the tool? Um, there's some content considerations here. You know, structurally, I, I think it makes a lot more sense. Like you're putting, instead of it just saying the knife doctor, you're putting like this messaging forward. Um, but I'm wondering, I'm wondering here, like, what's the vision for what's going to come to fill this space? All right. Um, so it's kind of like we're moving two different directions. And I know, I know part of that is because we're, we're into the wireframes, but we haven't quite figured out the, the content yet. I do think it's really important that you put a put a pause on it for a minute and then say okay if i didn't have the structure here what would the content look like like forget about the 
forget about the structure for a second. I just want to write content. And then I will determine what the structure is going to be. If you could flip that, I think that you're, you're going to have a much easier time uh, then coming back and designing to the content rather than writing to the design. Okay, so design to the content, don't write to the design. And um, looks like you've maybe got an overhaul here on the Knife Doctor. I'm not sure if that's uh, a n the new logo or the old. It looks like it might be the new. Um, it's, um, you know, whatevs. Uh, it's going to... You're going to have trouble here. Uh, you know, just I'm looking at this from the perspective of what happens when this goes down and tries to work small. Um, you know, so just something to think about as you're as you're moving into this. It, you know, obviously the sharpening services and blade repair, that's got to come off there. Um I wonder if there's if there's some sort of version of this where it's just the knife doctor without the blade so that you can get you can get some oomph out of it in in this in this nav bar. All right. Um so I'm going to leave it there for the moment. Um I I would step away from the structure, focus on the content, lean on the the priority guide exercise for guidance and I would take I would take like three cuts at this um, not to make a knife reference but um, I think there's a first wave a second wave and a third wave where you're where you were adding content with each step um, and I think you have the idea of what the first wave is it's it's now okay what's the content that's going into those buckets and again you've you've got you've done the research with the person you have some you have some information from them regarding what the um what they're wanting to talk about what their objectives are so I, I think I think many of the answers are probably in here. The other thing I would say is this has got to be a situation where you are comfortable saying um I think this would work a little better if or can you give me some more information about x um you you know there's another conversation here with them before you you say this is done all right um so so that's where i would that's where i would that's the next step i would take is is trying to focus on you know you, you said services explanation links to learn or buy that's great what are those things because the other worry i have frankly with this is trying to come up with visuals for everything before you know exactly what it is that's going to be talked about um th it's one of the great it's one of the great rabbit holes we get into as designers we say oh and then the design will do this little zigzag thing or th i'll have four images here and then only two of the things that you've created actually have images like the other two are things that there isn't like a, a a, a concrete image that you could show and then you're just kind of making up a visual as you go so and, and these are like pretty big visuals so it's not something i would really want to just make up um as i go it and it seems like you know sharp things um like events events you know that that would be him at like a, a, a conference or something um store that that that, that says that this is like probably not like these are featured knives or something here though uh knife sharpening barber tool sharpening other sharp things those could just be under a heading of sharpening and like boop 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 three three blocks of text and this page shrinks immediately um you know the the you know and then then it becomes a question of okay well do i and, and then what's carrying the top okay these are the questions that I have based on based on what you have based on what you've got right now, and I think some of that is going to involve um, working with your client to determine okay what are our, what are our visual assets and you know do you need to hire a photographer do you um, do you need to 
uh, go buy some stock footage? Like, what is it that you need to do to carry off this design as it is right now? Um, and again, I've got concerns down here. Okay. So, um, we're going to, while we're in, uh, while we are here in the visual area, I'm going to jump just straight over to Kara. Kara has been working through her, um, through her hierarchy exercise. And one of the challenges I had for Kara was trying to, trying to find a way to get into the realm of this this was her original design for the bridges uh horizontal challenge um and it it's it's i say challenge because she was given assets to choose from and then it was and then it came down to um can you make a strong horizontal presentation uh that draws us clearly to one thing and this definitely did that um but it was muddled as we as we went through to the other designs and I really think that you crushed this one. Um, this, this is, it's so much clearer what I'm supposed to be looking at um, than it was before. So I, I really appreciate the adjustment here. Like it's like, boom, instant bridge, vertical focus to the left. Perfect. Uh, when we come over here, it, it, this, she had the same challenge for nature. Um, and this is great. You know, this is great. Um, I think what you, you know, I think what you initially tried to do was just, I, I, I've got all these images and I'm going to try to use them. And it, it took just a, hey, by the way, where's the focus? Oh, well, if I've got to focus something, I need to get rid of some of these Im Im images. And so much of the interface exercises that any of you, are, any of you are going, that are going through interface, I'm always throwing more at you. Ask Luigi. I threw a ton of stuff at Luigi earlier this week, and he tried to cram it all in. And it's like, no, no, no. Design is about editing. We're going to pull stuff out. Okay? And when you pull stuff out, then you can begin to design. When you try to fit it all in, it's very difficult to do any design. Stuff starts looking like Craigslist and Little Bitty or uh, Pinterest, and it's hard to really do a qual any quality work. Um by the way, I think that you not only took the image that was the strongest of nature for your horizontal, um, th this this large image inside of this large focal point and l large uh, usage of a bright color that just kind of pops and throws itself forward. This was the this was the photo that had the most throw to it. And what I mean by throw, this is a terminology. This is a terminology we used to use when we talked about magazine covers. Uh, when we talk about throw, a magazine cover sitting on a shelf or uh, sitting in the newsstand, and how far away can the user or how far away can the reader be from that and it capture their attention? And this is one of the things that we, I, you know, did for years with uh, when I was designing for uh, uh, there was a tabloid called Red Eye. And my goal every day was to beat every other publication out of the box. And I would do that by large images, big type. And this, this really, uh, really um, exemplifies that because all the other images are beautiful, but this is the one that really just projects, throws across the room. So not only did you create hierarchy with the um with the size and um and you know it's on the grid and all that but it it just like pops right across the room so really good job there Kara I think that you crushed this uh this uh second stab and you can see she had other options she had other options that she could have used um but I think these are all and there and, and frankly there are no right or wrong options to use here they um they're just choices and I think you did a great job of meeting the challenge of horizontal focus and vertical focus uh, for the different uh, different topics that are here so great work uh, we will continue moving along and uh, actually what what's fun is Tejil has um, thrown in a number of options 
and let's let's take a look at these because um, she is she's working on her homepage and trying to land on a design that is going to uh, she's trying to land on a design that's going to to pop you know it's going to have that throw um, and as we as we look through you know one of the things that I, I, I was working with Tedril earlier this week was trying to come up with something that had personality in the typography and so she switched her typography up a little bit and here I, I really feel like the hi there I'm Tejil um, it's it's getting too big at this point um, but there's also the squareness between because it's one two one two and I thought that you had an option, uh, although I do like the I do like the l uh, line height here on the the read in below, user experience designer and creative producer from in Orlando, Florida. I like the I like that much more than I like than this. I, I I'm not sure what happened there, but I really liked the space the, like the structure of this, and and I was wondering if. Um, I was wondering if this coming up just a bit more, like keep the same structure, but just make it like 20, 25% larger. I think that that like works really well. It also stair steps down into your photo. Um, regarding like the illustration and whatnot here, it, it's, it's interesting. I wonder if there isn't, if, if there isn't a, making a frame out of the thing uh like like right like you've got all these very organic like rounded corners and shapes and then it goes and then it goes straight across and i'm wondering if there isn't like a if there isn't a way to to continue that organic shape as if the the frame that you're sitting in is also organic um you know it's almost like this this is like um it has a coral feel to it i guess um but it 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 looks kind of like leaves, but it feels like coral because it's all different colors and pointed up. So it's 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 uh it's kind of unique. Um, I, but I but I thought there was some there was something just very interesting about these shapes. But then I got the uh, I got down here. I'm like, eh, it just cuts off. Why does it just like slice off? Um, and then you had one more, and this one it's it's interesting. It's like it, again, I go back to. I go back to if I if if you didn't cut off and if the shape kind of if the shape kind of worked with you I'd be more crazy about this. Also, I kind of would like the you know the dots. I kind of want those just on top. Um, again, here this hi there I'm Tetra. I like hello. I I, I can't I can't. I, I I feel like I can't accurately express why I like it. But I feel like it guides the user. It, it's it's directional. It's directional because it creates a it creates a diagonal that moves the user toward you, not and and, and it doesn't just like block off kind of. It, right now it's just blocked off and just off off on its own. And the hello part also it, it it's hello. Um, I, there's just something. Hi there. It's. Meh. Hello, I, I like the I like the hello. I also like, frankly, the um, I like the the stroke. I like the outline on it. It 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 um, you know, it it allows Tejil. I you know, I'm Tejil. It allows that to have the emphasis, but hello is still really big. So, um, there's there's something about the third one, and and it's so weird because you were like, I'm not sure about option three, and that's the first one I go to. It's like that's a boom, option three. So um, I really like this. I think that it's. Um, I think that it's definitely like you know. I think it's definitely stepping in the right direction. Okay. So I would keep it up. I would. I would really focus here. Um, these uh, these shapes. I I really think that um, that you've you've got something. Um, and if you if you go with one of these other, I would just try to find a way to work in like if you're cut off there that's fine you can just like come up with an with another color or or um like r r instead of being cut off just round round that shape um like do something to give it this more organic 
uh, feel. Um, and I think I think you'll be you you're you're definitely in the right area though. You're 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 moving this the ball is moving in the progressive uh, positive direction. So um, that's my my two cents on that. And then I want to jump over here. I realize we're just like bouncing all over the place today. I want to jump over here and look at Katie's work. Uh, Katie, the, first of all, Rob O, uh, this is much easier to read. Um, if you followed uh, on, I believe it was uh, probably the Monday edition of the Feedback Loop, Katie's Katie had her user flows, and they were just kind of like, they look like um, the old mousetrap game where you drop the pin, drop the pinball and it would kind of move around and up and down, and um, it was um, it was interesting. But these are much clearer. You still got a little bit of that, but that's that's forgivable um, by comparison to where we were. And, and some of this, I got to be honest with you, some of this is <laughs> as I, I'm really excited today. Um, some of this is per progress. Like I get excited about seeing your progress. So I. I'm not so focused on, oh, it's not perfect. Um, if you're making progress, I'm going to be really happy. If you're, if, if you're stagnant, that's, that's when I'm like, Ugh. and and you could do really good work, but if you're stagnant, I'm still like, Ugh. um, but it's another reason like why I don't like to, why I'm glad I don't give grades. Um, I would prefer to like judge this based on like the quality of work that you're doing based, you know, it's you versus you. All right. And this this is far better. We kind of walk through the steps on this one, so I'm not I'm not so interested in discussing that further. Here, um, you you were you've got your home page selects tab selects menu tabs menu page options. Um, that's fine, but I don't think that all meals category or search are decisions. It's like here are my options, and, and I'm coming out of that, and then here. If I also, it looks like, um, yeah, the arrow is backward on these two. Like it looks like, it looks like I'm going from abandoned meals to all meals rather than going from all meals to abandon all meals. So I go to all meals, I look around, I decide that I don't want something there, I abandon it, and then I go back to select um, tab menu. And in some ways, I could also say just like, um, although I like knowing that, and I like knowing why this is happening is I've abandoned the meal. Um, so abandon, you know, here is abandoned meal category. Here is abandoned search. And it all goes back to, I'm on that menus tab. Um, here is a uh, user found searched item, um, found the, um, found the meal options. Okay, so satisfied with cat satisfied with categories, found the meal options. Um, user wants to find a meal option. Um, this is interesting. This is interesting um, because I don't necessarily you know if we if we carry this forward. I'm, think about how we test this, and this is always important. When you sit down with a user, you're going to say, "Okay, I would like for you to find a meal option." And the find the meal option really is just, I'm going to go to the menu tab. I'm going to hit the menu page options. I'm going to hit category. And yeah, I guess I've satisfied the meal options because past that it doesn't, it, we're not asking find, we're not asking find a, a meal option that satisfies you. That's a different, that is a different um, user flow. You're saying can you find the meal options? And that is literally hit the menu tab, hit category all meals or search, and then there are the options. That 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 is the flow. There is no need for abandonment in that flow because that's not 
that's not part of the that's not part of the test here. To make abandonment part of the test would be to say um, user wants to find vegan options. Okay? And then here it would be I could search by category and it is either of uh, you know selects vegan from category or returns back to search menu tab all meals it is scrolls down to vegan or goes back to all meal tabs searches searches for vegan or abandoned search like there isn't that there isn't that refinement of next step it's just it as a as a user flow it is broad okay and this is where you know again as we as we make improvements we we tighten the we tighten the noose around the the exactness that we're looking for so now that we've now that we've addressed some of the structural issues of the flow itself now we can really focus on the what the flow is trying to do and you know, yes, there are some backward arrows, and that's just like you coming in, clicking on that, and like hitting delete, and then redrawing it. But there's the actual, there's the actual consideration of okay, if I sat down with, if I sat down with a user, and I said, can you complete this task? They could complete the task without ever having to deal with the, I'm satisfied or I'm or I'm not satisfied because the task isn't, are you satisfied with it? The task is, can you find it? Okay, so you know, um, you know, actually, you could rip all of this out and just go, "Yep, found a meal option." You know, um, so I would encourage you to maybe look at this and say, and, and write this as a test in terms of, can you find a specific meal and how how you would do that? Um, but again, just a little more specificity on it. And I think you've got you've got it. Uh, let's continue down. So user wants to know what ingredients are in a meal. So I'm going to seek out the meal. Um, so seeking out the meal, like again, where am I? Um, am I am I on the menu page? Am I on the specific meal page? I don't know where I am. Um, I I think this really needs to be like home page menu page meal page like okay um, proceed through the meal search flow so I'm guessing that I'm on the menu page I'm guessing like the seek out this mythical seek out meal I feel like that I must be I must be on the menu page and I want you to think about this think about what seek out meal tells a developer who's trying to work with you about where they are they're coming to this cold, okay? They have no idea. They, they've been assigned to this project. They, they just left another project, and they're trying to ramp up really fast because they've got another project to get to, and they're going through the flows, and they're like, seek out meal from where? Where is this happening at? And they read through it, proceed through meal search flow. Okay, so I must, have I gone through, have, have I typed in into search? Like they're trying to do the gymnastics to figure out. So I've, I've, I'm either in menu or I'm in some sort of search. Um, so we we need to sort out what this is. And then it says, oh, I found a meal. Here, user did not find the meal they were looking for. Um, and then they go back to whatever seek out meal is. Okay, so we're going to solve for that. Once we solve for that, the rest of this, I think, can make sense. Because... When they don't find what they're looking for, they go back to this home base. Um, here they found they found a meal, um, and they. I really feel like this is proceed through uh, meal meal search flow. Okay, so um, search searches for meal. All right. So uh, pr pr uh, what's uh, perform search? Okay, so I performed a search. So that would say, uh, uh, I'm, I'm on a search field. Perform search, selects meal, um, ingredients are listed with the meal. Um, and that's fine. It's like that. what you're saying there, and this is something that you can grasp onto, is when you select a meal, the ingredients are shown right away. 
you don't have to like click on an ingredients tab like there there is no an additional step um, and that gives you a sense of what the design of this is going to be like it's I'm designing this so that when I click on uh, um, chicken Vesuvio clicked on chicken Vesuvio from the from from the search field like uh, user selects from search results okay so uh, so uh, here we are M menu page uh, user performs search search results are presented uh, user selects from s user selects a meal ingredients are listed and that that flow would would work okay so again you're saying search so I'm seeing search we're from a search you're going to have a list of results I'm going to select the meal from those results I haven't found the meal because the meal is in the results but once I select the meal then I have found the meal and then the ingredients can be listed um, if I if I go th if I search and the results come back and I don't find what I'm looking for user didn't find did you user did not uh, uh, search did not satisfied you did not satisfied you search did not satisfy the user's needs then I go back okay so there's some adjustment that's needed here but mostly it's 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 all about about like where does this start okay and that and that again you we, we covered this last time um, that is you getting used to communicating with uh, with other people like I'm sure in your head you know where that is You've you've just uh, said seek out meal. You haven't thought you haven't thought. I need to communicate where they're beginning this this journey at. All right, and that's every new designer does this. All right, so user wants to place an order. Log into account. Okay, so there you've told me. Uh, okay, I've got to log into my account. All right. Um, you could also say um, uh, you could also you know start this at a different point, but at least here. You've told me exactly what I need to do to begin this process. All right. Um, select, select place an order. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm on my account page or I've logged in and um, I'm going to select place an order. Add meals to cart. Um, so here, like what meals? Where are the meals coming from? What page am I on? Um, if I'm on the order page, I'm going to go. I'm going to guess that there are there are meals on that page, and um, so selects selects meal select meals adds to cart. So it like the meal selection is a separate step. I, I can't just like meals to cart. Um, I, I guess there could be a all function like, but then I've got to select all and then add meals to cart. Um, choose quantity. Um, choose, I'm guessing choose quantity would be, you're saying that in the cart, I can then adjust the quantity. Um, enter promo code if ap applicable. Um, promo codes are typically in the checkout phase. Okay, uh, so if if like I'm going to enter a promo code that's going to be close, I believe that's going to be closer to the payment. All right, so that that's probably just like a lack of experience or it's not. I don't want, I don't want to say that. That's that's probably not that's probably not fair. Um, um, the promo code, um, it's not experience. It's awareness. Okay, and. The reason I say that is we've all done online shopping of some sort, but very, very few times in your last checkout were you like writing down all the steps in the order, right? So, so here I, I really believe like um, the promo code closer to the checkout. We're proceeding to checkout. Now we're going to choose dates. We're going to enter payment information. Um, this is interesting because they're off it, like we've logged into the account okay if we've logged into the account if we've you know 
if we've done anything with the account, we likely have previous orders. If we have previous orders, our payment information should already be there. All right. So this in this area, it is choose existing payment method, add payment method. If it's existing payment method, I just move down the line. If it's adds a payment method, then I have to go through and add that payment method and then then it's processed or it's declined. And if it's declined, I don't necessarily know that it goes all the way back to the top of the checkout phase. It seems to me like it would go back to the choose payment. So it would come back right back, it would like loop back to here. Uh, final order confirmation. Um, so this is interesting. I've processed the payment. I shouldn't be able to change the order after I've made, ma and I got place order. Um, okay, so when I process the payment, it's going to be after I've placed the order. I, the, okay, so choose the delivery date. I can add, I can add payment information. I don't necessarily know that the payment has been declined. It may be that the payment was not, um, uh, like the, I, I didn't like, maybe I entered the number in wrong. Um, um, uh, form of payment, um, uh, form of payment declined. The, I could I could actually have the payment declined over here after process like I've placed the order then the payment tries to go through payment successful I get the confirmation so so something about this last bit is out of sorts with regard to payment processing placing the order getting the confirmation so so Final order confirmation, that's like a review, like I'm going to review my order, and then I place the order, and then I get a confirmation. I need the confirmation after the order is actually gone through, all right? So regard, regardless of everything, anything happening up here, let's focus on this back here, because this understanding of how payments go through, I think, I, I think this is a, a really key spot to get right. Because, you know, you can enter that payment information, but again, if we are already in the system, if, we, if we've logged into our account, that payment it really is, do I want to use the existing method I have on file, or do I want to enter a new one? So there's that, that piece of it. And then final order confirmation is really review order, and then I place the order, and if, if the payment processing is successful... I get the order confirmation. If the payment processing is unsuccessful, I get thrown back to, to enter payment information here. Um, if I want to change order, I do change that at review order, but I, I you know, it's it's just a slight tweak on on the language because there there are, there appear to be a couple of steps that are out here. Okay, so that is two cents there it looks like we got a couple more here user wants to change date food is delivered okay so i've logged in my account selected my profile uh i shouldn't have to select my profile because i've already logged into the account but um oh but i if i've logged into the account and i'm on like the home page uh, so again goes back to okay where am i uh logged into account selects profile from nav um Okay, so now I'm in my profile, select orders, um, edit orders, so edit orders. Uh, so edit orders would be, so find delivery date as a decision. Um, so if I edit order, I could then go to select new delivery date or... Um, Desired data is unavailable, and it goes back, takes me back to edit order, 
and then confirm new delivery date. That one works pretty well. Um, that one works. Pr that's pretty straightforward. Um, there is this one loop through here. Um, I could see this as a decision, or I could see it just coming directly off of this. But either way, uh, that one. Oh, excuse me. That one's much much clearer. Um, how to check out? Okay, I feel like wait. User wants to place an order. Okay, so now we're getting into more checkout. Okay, go to cart. Enter promo code if ap applicable. Enter shipping address. Choose delivery date. Um, so we've got review. So this is much closer to. So this is much closer to what we were just looking at. Um, so I think this isn't method. Pr it, you know, it isn't payment interpayment information, payment processes. It isn't the payment. Uh, it, it's payment method approved, payment method declined, and then you look back through. Payment method declined allows you to say, okay, it's expiration date, it's uh, wrong uh, privacy code, it's incorrect name. Like there's all sorts of reason why the, the method could be declined. So I think, think this basically is right, but it's not that the payment has been processed, okay? So here's review order. And I can edit order, or I can approve the order, I can place the order, and then upon placing it, payment is authorized or payment is declined. Okay, that could kick it, back, kick it back. But then I also need the confirmation. So so there are a couple of things here, but this, it's, it's strange because this is much closer, in my opinion, to the, to the move, uh, or to the, to the answer, than user wants to place an order. It, a user wants to place an order. Um, it, it, I almost wonder if this should be user adds user user creates an order and adds to cart. You know, like, and then and then down here you do uh, user checks out. So now we're in the cart. So. It's almost like I would, instead of like rethinking the wheel here, I would just make this about the getting to the cart and then make this about, this down here, about checking out. Because the the one down below, this is much closer, while it still needs adjustment, this is much closer than, um, than this version up here. So, so there, yes, there are adjustments that are, that are necessary, but you have two flows that are covering a lot of the same ground and I think that the easiest way to to adjust this is to focus on making the payment adjustments to the last one, which is already much closer to the right answer, and then nuking this this one right here in favor of making that one about you know, create adding items to the cart because um, the payment stuff on the end of that, and it's it's funny. It's funny because the the items that are at the end of the third one uh, are not nearly as re are not nearly as close to the mark as the last one, and a lot of that comes with you've already worked through in your head what that process is really like, okay? And if you've worked through in your head what that process is really like, that means that you are that much closer to the actual reality of the situation because you've worked through it once already. So while this one wasn't very close, this one was much closer, and it's because you had just worked through the same mental gymnastics and you'd already started to refine yourself down below. That's what I'm seeing there. So um, good work on tackling the problem twice. Uh, still needs a little bit of work, uh, but but again, I would, I would adjust the third one to be cart, adjust the last one to be pay payment, and you'll be much closer to the finish line on that. And I just want to check out and make sure that um, uh, we've got things here. It appears, it appears like Kara has run in. Um,
Kara has run in here at the at the at the finish line with one. So let's go ahead and grab it. Um, I like seeing I like seeing the push. So um, we're going to we're going to dig into this one right now, Kara. Um, so she's. Um, yeah, Kara's Kara is a visual designer by trait, um, by uh, by training, and um, I, I'm absolutely certain she's going to have no problems here with the typography exercise. Um, so um, let's see here. Much closer to home for you. So you've got cap height, which is keying in here on, um, on the the top line here. You can see it's the, it measures the height of the cap capital, um, uppercase letter uh, x height. That's number two. Baseline's three. Ascender. Ascender is going all the way up. Uh, so that's four. Overhang of these little bitty bits here so that's five descender that's the, that's the nice hook here on the g um counter counter um, actually this these are also counters counters are any enclosed area um and that um and so, some some would even say this is a counter i'd be I, I, actually some would even say this is a counter it's just not a closed counter um and then the serifs here on the B and the uh, actually technically that's a that's a serif as well. Um, so good job there. So we've got um, we've got these and um, you know we've got die dot Roboto, Plex and um, you've done it. You've done a good job of of highlighting uh, not only what you would use it for but what you would most likely use it for. Um, Roboto label and paragraph text way better than as a headline. Um, headlines are pretty sleepy. Um, there's just not enough personality in it, uh, particularly by comparison with the the other items it's sharing sharing the screen with. Um, I used to love Plex um, as a like a paragraph uh, body typography, and I've just grown less crazy about it over time um Roboto's nice I, I don't necessarily know how much Roboto I would want to see set in a in a typeface obviously this is just too thin you just can't use it but it's such a beautiful headline gorgeous headline uh, a lot of personality there so um medium contrast um Legible X height is large. Uh, wait, uh, with little contrast. And, uh, Roboto's easy to read at many sizes. Um, isn't the strongest headline? Is still feasible. High contrast. Best use large. Yeah, you've got all the you've got all the right stuff here. You've got all the right stuff. And so much of this, for those of you that are that are following along, so much of this is is really about. Um, it's about being able to talk typography. It's about being able to express what you're seeing um, in terms that are associated with typography. It's about getting away from, oh, I like that one. Oh, I don't really like that one. And there's nothing wrong with stating your opinion. Okay? But you want to be able, be able to... It's kind of... I compare this to like when chefs talk about food versus you and me. Okay. And maybe you're a chef and maybe it just applies to me. I do not have the vocabulary to talk about spices and flavors in the way that a chef does. A chef can have a conversation with another chef and they can understand where the, the, uh, the other person's coming from because they they know how to talk about the food. They know how to describe what they're tasting, what they're smelling. Um, you know, I could not tell you the difference between, 
uh, there was an ingredient the other day that I was looking for. It was, um, is it cumin? I, I forget what it was. I'm not a cook, okay? I am a designer. And a designer needs to understand how to really talk about typography. And part of, part of our job is always to, is always to educate the people that we're working with. And it's not just your coworkers, okay? It's also your clients. Your clients are going, oh, I, my mom really likes this font or my, you know, my sister is a designer and she said to use this. Um, and you want to be able to talk with them about what their selections, what works about their selections, what doesn't. Um, it's very difficult to really steer a client in the right direction or steer a boss or a coworker in the right direction if your only response is, I don't like that. Or I like this. Oh, I really like this one. I don't know why I like this one, but I really like this one. That's not going to be enough. It's not going to be enough to push the ball forward. So for you, when we're walking, when we're working through these hierarchy exercises or when we're working through the typography exercises, what I'm really hoping that we're doing is developing a vocabulary about what we are seeing in, in the tools that we are using. Um, so that said, that's the feedback loop for Wednesday. And I hope that it's been beneficial to all of you, thank you, Rebecca, thank you, Tejal, thank you, Katie, thank you, Kara, for all submitting work today. Um, I look forward to doing this again with all of you again tomorrow. And guess what? Eve, I will see you in about 90 minutes. Take care, everybody. See ya.